my, la my last thing on this, I mean, when it, it comes to the Israeli killing of Americans, you know, Americans that are being killed by Israel and their family, they feel that these Americans are the children of a lesser God because Israel is committing the crime, Israel is committing the murder. Is that true? Uh, it's not. Uh, look, Said, uh, I'm not sure I fully uh, understand your question. I mean, there there but, are less Americans than, let's say, when Israel commits, it's, it is really the identity of the killer rather than the identity of, of the killed, so to speak. So, uh, again, I'm not sure I fully comprehend what you're asking, but let me just be pretty clear about this. Uh, in this context, um, in any context, uh, to this government, to this State Department, uh, an American citizen is an American citizen, and we take the safety and security of American citizens uh, incredibly seriously. <laughs>
Um, and then we just document. Yeah. So with our phones, with cameras. Um, and that usually deters them from doing anything beyond the absurdity that they already do. Yeah. So, yeah. When you say them, you're talking about the Israeli forces. Yeah. So the Israeli occupation forces, Israeli army, settlers. Um, but sometimes it doesn't deter them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. famously, there have been some casualties linked to the, uh, to the, I think the organization even you were with specifically, I think Rachel Corey was a member of it. Um, she was bulldozed in 2000, I think three. So another guy got shot in 2004 and I think was brain damaged. Then another guy in like 2014, oh no, he died in 2004. And then a bunch of other people have been shot. And I think another one killed and several others wounded. Yeah. So, um, Faza is a actually fairly new organization. But we also work with ISM. So that's International Solidarity yeah. Mission. Um, and that's been going on for decades. So the only difference is um, FAZA is like Palestinian run and led. But we have our trainings together on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday. And then we also go to the same protest uh, in Beta every Friday. Can you talk a little bit about these protests and maybe like what the scene is like a little bit? Yeah, so the Beta demonstration... Um, uh, so we're in the land of Beta. They tried to go back to their land that a settlement is built on. I think it's the Avatar settlement. Yeah. And it starts out with a Juma prayer um, for five, ten minutes. After the, after the prayer, that's when the chanting starts. And almost immediately after, um, while the chanting starts, uh, there's tear gas shot at us and live rounds. Um, once the threat was a uh, little higher, uh, in my case, uh, we ran behind a concrete wall. And they were at some rooftop or watchtower to our right in kind of a cutout in the, the trees. So we saw them, maybe like three to four um, IOF soldiers. And um, yeah tear gas and live rounds and we hid behind the concrete wall still tear gas that was the first time i ever felt tear gas and uh live rounds you could see uh the dust coming off the concrete walls um but maybe five minutes later there was a threat that they were coming down from their um tower so the palestinians were running and we ran too we climbed over a concrete wall um and away <laughs> I don't even know where we were. We were away. Yeah. And then um, we regrouped. Uh, we saw the road that uh, we went up. Palestinians running down. And then to our right in the distance. And we waited until it was clear. We ran too. We had five minutes to have a little coffee and tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a cigarette, you know. Um, but then more Palestinians uh, went to our right. Uh, at the foot of where the Israeli army was. Um, shot tear gas at us, some live rounds, and they were coming down from the tower. And our attention was there. But at a certain point, Palestinians were running from our left and then behind us through the olive grove. And then we ran. Um, so I didn't know if that was a threat that was coming from the left or they were just scared because the... Um, the Israeli army was coming from that uh, road that we were watching them from mm -hmm. at the foot of it. But we ran. I made sure, like, um, everyone was in front of me and we, they were okay. But right when I was about to step down in the olive grove uh, further in, I felt a pain in my leg and a bang. I thought it was a tear gas canister that hit me um, because it felt like someone took, like, a blunt object and hit my leg. Uh, someone was able to help me run because I was still running after that. They came back and like helped me run. And then in the clearing, that's when the Palestinians lifted me up. And then I realized that it was not a tear gas canister, <laughs> that there was some blood on my pants. And, um, and then, yeah, so then pickup truck, emergency clinic, ambulance, Israeli army blocked the road initially. Somehow we got around and then two to checkpoints where they demand to see me. And that delayed my care further. And then finally to the hospital in um, Rafidia in Nablus. Wait, sorry. The IDF blocked the truck that was carrying you after you'd been shot. Yeah, it was also an ambulance at that point. So 
the ambulance, um, you know, it was an ambulance. They were blocking the ambulance and then two other checkpoints where they demanded to see who was inside, even though it was an ambulance and the lights were on, everything. I want to I want to ba- back up a little yeah. bit. Here. Yeah. So, because that's fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got shot by the army yeah. of Israel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I mean, which is actually not that insane. But like like you said, I think you know I've I've been to a couple different countries in my life, and like part of you is always like, well, I have an American passport, and like there's this vague thing where like I'm like, well, I guess I don't mean someone to, like hesitate before they shoot me if they're like really gonna shoot me. But then, like as history has shown us <laughs> countless times, it doesn't. If really push comes to shove, someone will absolutely shoot you, no matter what passport you have. Yeah. And in the case of groups that that, such as the one you were with, um, sometimes I think they'll do that maybe on purpose a little bit. So y- you guys are at this. I've never been to to, to Palestine, but I, you know I'm, I've seen a lot of videos of like, especially like settler violence in the West Bank, and they're generally like in these like sort of dusty towns, and then there will be like a fully like fortified like a fort there. And I know in the particular uh, settlement uh, that 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 you guys were protesting, that one had been cleared by the government at one point because like generally, generally for our listeners. People, like, the most insane people in Israel, which is, no disrespect, saying a lot, the most insane guys in Israel, like, like crackhead 20-year-olds, will, like, run out to, like, a Palestinian town, basically, like, throw together a shack, and then demand the army comes kill yeah. anyone who fucks with them. Um, they're mobs. Yeah, they're fucking mobs of, like, psycho. Fr- like, like, how people used to talk about how people, were, like, would go crazy on PCP. These guys <laughs> are like that. Um, in this fucking, they're wet as fuck. Um, in this instance, they got cleared in 2021 and then Smotrick, finance minister, a settler himself, big part of the settlement movement, has brought them back, has essentially legalized the settlement. The Israeli state claims the land underneath it, which I'm sure is very legal. Um, and now they're being protected by, like directly by the IDF. So when you say they're in a tower, are they like literally in a watchtower? Uh, from what I saw, it seemed like it was, um... But yeah, it's in the town of Beta, um, and yeah, it seemed like a watchtower to me when I was looking at it from afar. Um, and yeah, it went from like three people to like five people, just tear gas, live rounds. Um, and yeah, they're there to protect the settlers. Yeah. Um, that is their job. So if the settlers are attacking Palestinians, that's not their problem, you know? Um international volunteers even you know uh the settlers um in the town we were stationed in in kusra uh they were uh two weeks before i was there the settlers attacked international activists with metal uh rods and sticks um they got beaten up one person had a huge like oh i saw that though yeah. like it's like a british kid right mm-hmm. he got his he got fucked up yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he got a huge like bruise and it's like a not even a golf ball. It was yeah, it was just, wild. Yeah, yeah, it's like a football. And that was me like come going into Palestine. I was like, oh, this is real. Like I'm I'm about to you know see the real um, deal in Palestine um, because before that there was no I guess precedent at least for through the organization I was in. But then that happened. I got shot. Um, uh, I think two weeks after I left, uh, they were throwing stones at international activists, shooting at Palestinians. Um, the settlers were shooting themselves. Were shooting at Palestinians themselves. Yeah, I believe so. And uh, the um, the settlers were throwing rocks. Um, so it split. Uh, I think one of the international volunteers' heads open, broke a hand, and um, yeah. And then Ashnur was also murdered, but that was. Th- by the IDF, the Israeli yeah. army. So, I mean, I, I, when they started, if you don't mind me asking, has yeah. anyone ever shot at you before? Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, but uh, yeah, no, this, I mean, the, this was also my first time uh, getting shot. So tear were, gas and being shot. Were you? Because yeah. I, because I, I fully get like, yeah, I, I, I mean, everyone kind of knows the settlers are like, well, what well, basically they're like football hooligans who go around and just beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Sometimes they'll kill you. They don't generally kill, like, you know, foreigners. Um, but uh, 
were you expecting like okay like you know there's gonna be trouble but were you expecting to be like genuinely like to actually be shot at absolutely not i was like i got a power of passport but also like i knew there's a risk but um i thought it was going to be the extent of maybe the tear gas um but uh being an international activist I thought they'd be more cautious. Yeah. But at the same time, when I got to the hospital, one of the people uh, we were with was arrested. And then they heard that um, they thought I was Palestinian uh, running away. So They did. Yeah. Which doesn't make it any better. No, yeah, well, obviously know. not. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the know. excuse is they're like, oh, yeah, it's, sorry. Yeah. It's like, you look brown through the scope. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the official report was, oh, it was a mistake. We were doing warning shots in the air. They were definitely shooting at us and yeah. the Palestinians. Um, so that was definitely false. And yeah, they were doing warning shots on yeah. the air, on the ground, Yeah, down low. <laughs> Wait, exactly. so w- when they were <laughs> shooting at you, they were in the tower? That, I don't know. I was running. Oh, so you were, at that did, point, you were just yeah, taking off. I didn't yeah, know yeah. if, uh, because the Palestinians were running from our left, I didn't know if um, some um, Israeli army was coming from that end or yeah. the people that were up in the tower were coming down. Um but either way, um, their story was warning shots. But usually if they're shooting in the air, it would come down on you. This one's straight through my, my right thigh. Yeah. Um, from the back to the front. Wait, so. can you just, where do you get yeah, shot? Right here. Damn. Yeah. And I was very lucky. Um, that's why I was also smiling because I was like, I don't know how bad this is, but I want the folks back home to know <laughs> I'm okay, yeah. I think. Um, Did it go through? Yeah, straight through. That's yeah. I mean, that's lucky. Yeah, when I was um, so no bone, no artery, and when I looked at it, the, the one time I did um, at the hospital when they were cleaning it, it was like a flesh flower. It was like pulsating too. It was oh, oh my gosh, I oh my almost fainted when I saw it, and I was like, good thing that I did not look at it in the ambulance. So, yeah, yeah. Good God! And so you said, I'm sorry to, to yeah, dwell on this a no, little bit. Um, obviously, like. Everybody else, I'm afraid of someone shooting me. So naturally, I'm like kind of a little almost morbidly curious. Like when you, so you got shot, you, the adrenaline kept you going. Oh yeah, I was still running, um, but I was running and limping. And then um, one of the other international activists came back and then helped me limp away until we got to the clearing. And they yeah. shot other people too? They shot at them. Um, in Beta, there's 17 Palestinians that have been murdered yeah. since October 7th. And then also... Uh, almost a month later, Aishinora was murdered, and she was part of International Solidarity Mission. Yeah, so, and I know a couple other people, or at yeah. least one other person, I think a teenager got shot at the yeah. same protest as her. How long did it take to get to the hospital? Because you mentioned being stopped. And yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. we, like, kind of anybody who follows, mm-hmm. like, Israel-Palestine, like, one of the most, I think, well-publicized things, because media isn't afraid to report on it, because it's kind of like, you can't really argue with it, this being wrong, but, like, medical... People trying to get to hospitals throughout Palestine, whether we're talking about from Gaza, which is even harder, but like yeah. even from the, through the West Bank with all the different areas because Israeli army controls some, some is technically controlled by the Palestinian Authority, some is this weird mix of both. Um, it took you a while to get there, and they just like open the, the, the ambulance and just look at you? Yeah, and they're like, okay, I guess. So they close it, another checkpoint. Um, yeah, so... I think I got shot around a little bit after two and then took a little while to get to, well, it was pretty quick to get to the emergency clinic in Beta and then getting transferred into the ambulance. And then I think that was all maybe like 2.30 and then took 30 minutes to get to a place that could have taken a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, So like another 30 minutes after. Jesus Christ. I mean, what's going through your head at this point? You know, I mean. Oh, in in the ambulance. Yeah. Or in the hospital. Um, I was just like, I feel okay. Okay, my vitals are stable. Yeah. Um, my friend is here. My friend's in the front. Uh, Palestinians have treated me well and showed me so much love. Uh, I hope it's not that bad. I hope I survive. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is exactly what my friends feared and my family. Um, but all they're going to hear is that I got shot. So that's why I was keeping the smiling face and hoping that this was the extent of the pain and it was not going to go higher. 
which thankfully that was the case. Did people try to talk you out of going? Yeah, I mean, I think they they knew my passion. They knew that I wanted to be there in solidarity. Um, You know, they were just like, don't go. Mm -hmm. Um, It's dangerous. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's dangerous. And I know you don't want me to go, but, um, you know, my mind's set. And, um, you know, I want to show my solidarity in this way. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then two days after, it was two days, basically right after you get there that that happened. Yeah. So just like Aishinori, it was like our when, our training was Wednesday. And then actually the next day after that, Thursday, it was just very calm. And I was like, ooh, is this, is, is this how I'm going to have, yeah, you, you know, just, is, you, how, is this yeah. how it's going to be for the whole mm-hmm. two weeks I'm there? Um, so uh, that day, I only had like a few pairs of clothes. I packed really light. So I bought some clothes, got transferred or you know, exchanged the money, and we had a beautiful dinner at a Palestinian's house, a uh, family's house, and I was just like, whoa, okay. I, I like to see this side too. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, so when are we going to have to, like, be alert and everything? So the next day, that happened, <laughs> and then I got shot. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we, we, we've we mentioned it a couple times, but, you know, less than, I think it was less than a month later, Maybe if just a few weeks later, Eichner gets shot. Um, and that, you know, it, it's funny. Whenever stuff like that happens, especially in Palestine, but really mostly in Palestine, you're always like, surely something will happen, right? Like, surely, like, this will make... Because I remember seeing the news after you got shot and being like, damn, this dude got shot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know... And I was like, that's, that's pretty crazy. Like, you know, and, and this is also, you know, in the context of like Biden going out there and especially in relation to the hostages, like if you, if you harm an American, we will mm-hmm. harm you or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Or, I mean, I'm yeah. sure it took him 15, 20 minutes to finish that one sentence, yeah. but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Biden saying all this shit, like about like, you know, if where we go one, we go all with Americans. Uh, obviously we're discounting the numerous american palestinians yeah. or palestinian and americans because whatever they have been numerous and nothing's happened nothing's Nothing. happened no, yeah. not even like a yeah who that that yeah <laughs> you got just jake sullivan out there being mm. like they're looking into it um yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it was there any like reaction like did they, like, did like the the like consulate contact you so uh the only uh official um i guess concerning the U.S. Um, act that they did was the U.S. Embassy uh, contacted me. Um, they contacted me, wanted a report, and then eventually, um, because I didn't stay long enough to want, or I never wanted to go to, you know, a settlement or a military uh, base um, to put, give in the report. But um, through the embassy, they were able to send the report to Israeli authorities. Um, And I just got that email two days ago um, that they finally received it um, (laughs) after I was shot, (laughs) after I left already. Um, But yeah, so, and then the State Department had like some notice where it was like, oh, we know that an American citizen was shot in Mm -hmm. Palestine. I saw that. We... um, don't advise anyone to go to Palestine. Um, <laughs> that was uh, so no one else yeah. has reached out to you from the government. No state department, no politicians. But you got yeah. shot by the army of another country. Of another country that's yeah. supposed to be the U.S. ally. Yeah. So it, it's 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 wild. Um, the only politician that did try to reach out to me was Cory Booker. No uh, fucking you're way. You're joking. Yeah. You're joking. And, this guy. Because you're a Jersey boy. Yeah, I'm a Jersey boy. So, um, we, I just, we've got a little go history. On, go on, go on. Okay, okay. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so he tried to reach out to me. Um, someone was like, oh, you know, he's trying to reach out to you. Um, can we give you contact information? I'm like, uh, no. So in PBS NJ Spotlight, um, I, I told him, yeah, Cory Booker reached out to me. But I invite him to um, the lobby day with Americans for Justice in Palestine um, on the 24th. And the 23rd so of this month. So mm-hmm. I want him to meet with me, but with other people that, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, can give their testimony because I don't want to be the only one. And I don't want him. I didn't want to give him my contact information because 
he'd call and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, man." But what are you gonna do? Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do about being sorry? You know. Yeah. What are you gonna do about, uh, you know, not saying anything when I was shot? Your constituent, and um, which could have helped in the case of Aishinor, right? Yeah. The the Friday right after in Beta, right after she was shot, there was no tear gas, no live rounds. Um, and that could have probably happened if, you know, something was highlighted by my senator or any other politician when I was shot. Um, and the media here, too. So um, it's just sad that it took, you know, um, the sacrifice of Aisha Noor to have that kind of um, change happen. Um, they still blocked off um, where they usually pray, so they really weren't able to, you know, do what, you know, they usually want to do in demonstrations, but... Um, but yeah, it shows that there was a shift. Yeah. And that should have happened before, you know, anyone else was murdered or killed. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's sort of what, what I was, what I was getting at with, with the fact that like, there was no outcry after you got shot. And when you, I mean, it's, 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 we've seen this time and time again with like, not only Americans, but internationals getting shot, the IDF delaying investigation impeding investigation uh in the case of i believe the british guy got shot i think it was and again i I might be wrong on this and this is going off memory i think it was a british guy got shot in 2003 brain dead i think he's maybe taking off life support in 2004 but he's he's killed by the sniper the sniper who did it fucking sniper sees him through a scope shoots him he gets he gets into prison for manslaughter but then is freed by the government after Mm -hmm. serving a little over half his term of 10 years so he gets out after about six years um, you know, Rachel Corey, same thing. It was, and now, you know, her name gets smeared by like all the Hasbaris and, and it's the, it's a, but the American government has the ability to temper Israel in, in some regards, right? Like with, with Lebanon and, and Reagan even, um, with, uh, with, you know, there, there, there can be some phone calls made at least tone it down. Don't shoot any of our guys for the next month or so. Um, and they're just simply, they're just not interested in that. It doesn't seem like. Yeah. And, um, you know, this administration, last administration, probably every future administration, Mm -hmm. you know, if we continue with this two party system that, you know, perpetuates this, um, you know, will support uh, Israel and, you know, we don't see any real change even in the politicians in, in their support of Israel. Um, and even, to the point of being super ridiculous, right? We heard Biden, you know, parrot the lie that, oh, it was unintentional, they said. Mm -hmm. And then he added, right, that it was ricocheted off the ground into her head. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, And, yeah, there's testimonies on the ground from U.S. citizens. Uh, There's people that were there, you know, and and she purposely was away from the protest. And still was sniped in the head after I, th- I, f- I believe she got up from her prayer and then got sniped in the head. Yeah, which is yeah, wild. And it's not just the government. I mean, you know, you mentioned the media and the U.S. media covering this has been basically non-existent. <laughs> like they did yeah. even then uh, the report on her funeral. The New York Times care like went out of their way to characterize the funeral as not very american looking yeah to hot yes oh dude I yeah will, they should said I pull it up? yeah you should pull it up but not it's, very american looking well, i mean y- you might have been, dude i it's been crazy because if, if you just read like the meat like the bear reports media reports about her you're like this is a turkish woman who like mm-hmm. moved to america at like 24 and then went to palestine at 26 like this is like a this is a turk but like she moved here when she was less than one years old She's from fucking Seattle, which no disrespect to Seattle, some disrespect to Seattle, but she's she's one of the good, she's a good part from it. Yeah. Seattle is a pretty th- that is, come on, you kind of can't get more American yeah. b- the boring side than that, um, and it was just like it basically like portrayed her as this like, you know, maybe college radical Turk Muslim who who goes over there and like sticks her. Sticks your nose where it doesn't belong and get shot accidentally by our the most moral army in the world. And you know, it's it's anyone who shot a gun can tell you it's fucking hard to shoot. Like it is. Like it's hard to shoot like super accurately. There's a reason like you don't really like aim at targets for heads and stuff. They're small. Yeah. It's just like when they shot Shireen uh, Abu Akla. It's like 
there there was this whole thing where it was like, oh, well, the Palestinian shot her. Oh, then like, oh, it was actually someone accidentally shot her. And it's like, no, I'm sorry, you shot her on purpose. Like yeah. this video of you like shooting near her and then hitting her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that that's like, how did you feel when you heard about that? Uh, which one? Well, uh, uh, Ashnor. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a lot um, because it was the same demonstration I was shot at, and for me it was just um, it just angered me because you know there was no attention when I was shot, which could have helped deter you know mm-hmm. an escalation like that where she was sh- murdered, uh, uh, shot to the head, you know, um, and when I heard that too, uh, thankfully my students were chill that day because I was a wreck. <laughs> And, um, yeah, yeah, so it also, also the cane that they gave me from beta, um, it just reminded me that, you know, you know, my duty here as someone that has been, um, over there, saw it firsthand yeah, and can share the stories is, you know, I use every opportunity to shine the spotlight on Palestine and now also Aishinur, uh, that was murdered, um, you know, just carry the cane of beta with me to remind me and um you know just continue on so this is how the new york times characterized it with turkish flags flying and chants of quote god is great resounding through the cemetery eishner ezgi igi a turkish american activist killed by israeli forces in the west bank was laid to rest on saturday in a town on turkey's aegean coast although she moved to the united states as a toddler acquired citizenship and spent most of her life there the funeral for Miss Igi, 26, was deeply Turkish and profoundly pro-Palestinian. Hundreds of people, many carrying Palestinian flags and wearing Palestinian scarves, gathered at the central mosque in the town of Didem to say prayers for her, including senior Turkish officials. No American officials attended, and there was not an American flag in sight. Yeah. That's Some that's incredible that details that the New York Times decided to add. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a, that's, a, a, that's like the last line of the article, I think. Yeah, and in, uh, just even the phrasing "acquired U.S. citizenship." There, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of ways the media, you know, coats these things that you know is, you know, maybe at first blush doesn't seem to be that terrible, but when taken in, in total, with the fact uh, that they refuse to kind of cover this, refuse to point out um, who's responsible and why, you know, it starts to paint a kind of you know a bigger picture. Yeah, absolutely. And they were in Turkey. And also, uh, Palestinians have a huge respect for any international activists. And especially, you know, for the handful of folks that are martyred, um, they see them as heroes um, that are forever, you know, um, they are indebted to for standing up for them, um, alongside them. So, yes, there are Palestinian flags. Yes, there are Turkish flags because they're in Turkey. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that you know if it was in the U.S., you know, you'd have U.S. flags around, and probably Turkey and probably Palestinian flags too. But also, um, you know, it is it also saddens me that um, you know not one official went to her funeral. Yeah, right. Um, the absence of American flags. Uh, is also because nobody from, you know, the U.S. cared enough to be there at her funeral and pay respects to a U.S. citizen. So the absence is on them, you know. I mean, um, I mean, even more yeah. to that point, like, I, I, this might have changed by now, but at least uh, yeah. yes, by yesterday, Biden still hadn't called her family. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Didn't call me. <laughs> yeah, didn't yeah, call, yeah. Didn't call her family, you know, and... And that's an American citizen that was murdered, you know, by your ally. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The absence of care and, um, yeah, it's just disrespectful and disgusting. So. I want I want to I want to go back to something you said about uh, Palestinians' connection to international solidarity, right? Yeah. Um, the Palestinian movement has been uh, internationalist in character since like the '60s. I mean, like the 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 PLO at that point, like really, there was a certain point where they really positioned themselves as like a global front or as part of a global front 
um, as part of the third world movement, um, but also just as part of the, at that time, like socialist movement. Um, and since that time, there have been a lot of, a, a, a lot of people who've, who've, who've uh, I've known many of them myself who've, who've, who've had some, uh, interactions with the Palestinians, um, and, uh, say no more about that, but the, um, you know, I think one of the things that a lot of people, especially here like in America, well, I can't speak for anywhere else, but in America, I'm talking specifically about like a lot of the hubbub around the college protests. There was this thing where it's like, why do you care about this? Like what, like what you like privileged white people or whatever. I mean, that's usually how it's, that's portrayed. Or like, why are you like getting involved in this, in this, thou- this ancient feud, uh, between the Israelis and <laughs> the, Pal- which is crazy. Cause I mean, just like, I, really? I don't know. We were doing like 1200 years ago. I'm like, it seems like it's mostly been for like <laughs> past like 70 years. But, uh, but, um, there's this whole thing where it's like, you shouldn't get involved. Like you're an American. Like, what are you doing? You know, sticking your nose in somewhere where you don't belong. Um, you know, it, it's like you're privileged or whatever, whatever the fuck they say. Um, but that's not the case. Like Palestinians do, do seem to really respect a lot. of. I, mean, I know Rachel Corey is like, you know, the first I ever heard about it was from a fucking, there's a liquor store on hate street that has had a picture of her up there since I was like a fucking teenager. Um, and like a bunch of shit, uh, you know, I, th- like that, 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 like, wh- what do you say to people who have this sort of like self doubt, maybe even about that? Yeah. Um, I guess personally, right, uh, with solidarity with Palestinians, um, I'm part of uh, the National Democratic Movement of the Philippines. Um, so, Anak Bayan, Bayan. Um, uh, so we used to organize with some Palestinians. Mm-hmm. Um, some folks know from New York, uh, this organization called uh, Wool Palestine, Within Our Lifetime Palestine. Um, so I was introduced up when I was at the protest uh, on Labor Day um, by Nerdine. And I didn't even know the story, but she told me that um, because of our organizing together um, with Anik Bayan and Bayan, that she created her organization, Wolf Palestine. Um, I always, back then, I always saw Palestinians standing up for um, Filipinos and our liberation for our country, true liberation. Um, and when I saw her organization starting up, um, you know, we always came out to support too. So, yeah, it's very deep, um, the solidarity between, you know, Filipinos and Palestinians. Palestinians have also stood up for, you know, against police brutality. Um, you see it on, you know, the apartheid wall. Um, George Floyd's photo was up there. Um, and the thing about it, too, is all of our struggles are interconnected. Um, you know, our NYPD, you know, is... Uh, trained by the IDF, some some of them, right? Um, in the Philippines, I think the Philippines is like the third or fifth um, largest um, buyer of weapons from Israel. Mm. So all of our struggles um, were oppressed by the same folks, right? Um, but also all of our struggles, you know, are interconnected because of that. So um, the character of, you know, the Palestinian liberation movement, um is very internationalist in character, you know, uh, the Philippine movement. And also, I hope that, you know, here too, you know, it builds up. And when people doubt that, you know, oh, why am I, you know, or when folks critique people that are, you know, standing up for Palestine, um, I'd just say that, you know, all of our, you know, struggles and oppression are tied and... We can only liberate each other, uh, ourselves, when we're all together and supporting each other. And um, if you have doubt, there's a genocide happening on our phones every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's where a lot of folks, at least right now, um, they're joining in because they just can't get away from it. Yeah. Because it's happening right in front of our faces. And um, those of moral standing and good hearts, they just know um, that this is wrong. Um, you know, they said the same thing about, you know, activists back, you know, when it's anti-war movement in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't doubt yourself and, 
you know, know that your heart's in the right place and it's right in front of our faces. It's, you can't, you can't not say that, um, you know, we're in the wrong. It's, you, it's undeniable. So, yeah. I, I had a question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people see, you know, you mentioned like people see this stuff on their phones, which I think some people maybe l- get sucked into just like literally looking at pictures of dead bodies yeah. a little too much. And like, you know, I understand, you know, it's, I, I, and it feel, but it, I think, I think not to get too whatever about it, but like, I think maybe sometimes that feels like, like you're almost like punishing yourself and that feels like doing something because it feels like we can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reality is like you can do things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like, cause that's something I've heard from so many people is like, well, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And you know, you went over there. Can you t- actually walk us through like what that process was? Yeah. So, um, I was just very, yeah, disillusioned with the world when I was, when October 7th, the escalation happened, I was teaching and I'm like, how can I be teaching in the midst of this genocide? And like, as if nothing's happening. Yeah. Fast forward to like the end of the year, at a kafia. I guess someone stole it. Um, hopefully, it's someone that supported it and just <laughs> didn't have access to one. Um, I was bringing my uh, students snacks for the end of the year. It was like the last week. Yeah. Um, so I had to get a new one. I got a postcard. It said, um, "You know, thank you for your support." And then the right side said, "Invitation to visit." So I've always wanted to go to Palestine, but that was like the, um, I guess, the spark that was like, okay. This is your time right now. You're about to go to summer break. So um, I asked around, and someone told me about FASA. Um, so it's similar to ISM, internationally Sol- International Solidarity Mission. And um, so you provide the protective presence. Uh, so before I knew anything about that, um, I, I guess, applied or registered for an orientation with them. How do you, like on a website or something? Yeah, so it's defendpalestine.org. Gotcha. Or if you go on Instagram, it's at F-A-Z, the letter, or the letter, the number three uh-huh. and the A, um, underscore P-A-L. So Faza underscore, underscore pal. And um, I got connected and it started with the orientation and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. You know, I, I'm down for this. Um, and then there's like a four hour training online a f- couple weeks later. And I was like, whoa, this is a lot. Um, but it's good information. You know, you learn about, you know, how to differentiate between all the different, you know, like settler or army. You um, just learn how to get there, um, what to do if certain things happen. And then that was it. And then after that, uh, or actually, you kind of you tr- you plan a certain time that you're gonna go. Mm-hmm. Um, it's every other Wednesday that people go over, and the minimum commitment is two weeks. Oh, that's not yeah. bad. Yeah, two weeks. So obviously, some people stay more. There's yeah. people that have been there since the beginning of FASA and still there. Yeah. Um, some friends take, you know, three weeks, four weeks. Um, but whatever your commitment is, they do ask for, like, two weeks. You really do need, like, the two weeks just to even, you know, familiarize yourself with everything. Yeah. And it's just a lot, right? Yeah. Um, so if you can, it's two weeks. And uh, within those two weeks, well, right when you land and you get there, um, you go to a um, whole day training and then... You go to wherever you're stationed. So ISM is usually in the south. Um, FASA is usually central or north. And then it's always consent-based. So, like, you know, if you want to go to, you know, um, see the refugee camp or if you want to go to Jordan Valley, if you want to go to um, Masar Faryata, uh, where ISM is, there there are ways, right? So you're not just always stationed in one place if that's not what you want, right? Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to go to, you know, a demonstration, you don't need to. There's always room for folks to do what they're able to in their capacity. Um, you can just watch, you know? Yeah. Uh, where we were, was it like on a hill? And you see a settlement here, settlement there, 
and you can see when the army trucks come down. You can see when groups of settlers are around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's very important work too, right? I was on crutches, and the only thing I could do was watch. And I was able to see, you know, the Israeli army come. It's like the orange lights. So whenever I'm here, you know, I'm like, oh, that uh, street cleaner is not okay. IOF. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that um, park, you know, authority is not IOF. Oh, goodness. You know, it's just like the, the light. So it's very apparent um, when you're there, you can watch. Um, and then in town, a lot of times the Israeli army comes in. You're watching shepherds uh, or you're accompanying them. Uh, you're accompanying um, farmers. And my favorite was going to the playground, the garden, they call it, mm. um, right when I got out of uh, the hospital. And I was dancing with the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually only opened that when the Isra international volunteers came. So there was no, like, real space for the kids to play until we came. So that was a really beautiful thing to see. Yeah. Um, and then that process... Um, to help you when you leave too, as much as they can, and um, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. You wait, uh, sorry, I just assumed you flew home after you got shot, but you stayed out there. Oh yeah, so everyone was like, "Come home," and I'm like, "They always no, nah, I want to. I just got shot, home. but <laughs> it's two days. <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah, stay yeah. here. I want to be in <laughs> Palestine. You know, even when I left, I wanted to stay. You know, even longer." Um, I actually wanted to stay until more people came, which thankfully there was a whole bunch of people that came yeah. after, um, because I was scared that it was only going to be, you know, a few people there, but so many more people came. I was really happy, um, that they were safe and they had good peoples and, um, yeah, every two weeks. So, um, there's always folks rotating in, out, going to different areas and, um, it's very important work, and the Palestinians recognize that and very much appreciate it. So, yeah. so you wrote about your experience in Time magazine. We will link to that in the show notes so people can check it out. You did mention to us that you had originally submitted that at other places, but they were not so interested in the story. Yeah, so that was the New York Times. <laughs> they rejected it. Um for whatever reason, uh -huh. um, I'm sure they just... I can think of one or two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, Time Magazine picked it up, and they did say that, you know, they would only publish it if I put my real name out, which that was actually the second publication that uh, published my name, because also Washington Post. Um, and Washington Post only used a little quote, you know. It was very much focused on Aishinar, which is great. Yeah. Um, but um, they also were like, okay, we're only publishing it if, or at least your comment if we use your real name. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, you know, sheds more light on Palestine and uh, Aishinur. So, yeah, you know, my name's out there. I actually, this is a stupid question, so I don't even want to end on this, but I do want to no. ask. You teach high school? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> high school. So you had to go during the summer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is this <laughs> but, is my summer break. Um, yeah. I, this is just whenever I like read a story like this, I always mm. wonder like like details like this. But like mm. when you came back to school, mm -hmm. did all your <laughs> students know that you got shot like a few weeks ago? So, um, so I teach mostly freshmen. There is one class where it's all the different grades. But when I got back, um, my old students, yeah. Um, they were like, Mr. Santiago, did you really get shot? I saw it on TikTok. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, I did. By the Israeli army. Um, I was in Palestine. Yeah. And then my other students, my ninth graders, they didn't know. So how I told them. Because, you know, it's a guy with a cane. Yeah. Seems like a hip dude, whatever, you know. But <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they were like... Um, you know, why, why do you have a cane? And I'm like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So um, there was an NJ.com article that had my old name. Yeah. Amado Sison uh, that I used over there. And I had them all read like two sentences each and mm -hmm. just eased them in. And once it was done, I was just like, okay, so, you know, 
um, why do you think someone would go out there? You know, I gave them a little background. Yeah. You know, I had to be like, okay, this is Israel's perspective. This is Palestinian perspective. You know, just generally um, how they view the situation. And I was like, you know, yeah, this person was shot. Why, why do you think this person went? And then um, after everything was done, they gave their answers. I was like, yeah, that was me. And they're like, what? <laughs> and then they... they the ones that only paid attention for the two sentences, they were like, what? Let me read this now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was fun. And then, you know, now they all know. So. The uh, kids that saw it on TikTok, were they, like, well-versed in what was going on? Or did they have a sense of the context? Um, I think... Like, what, yeah. what did they see? Like, your ass on TikTok, what did they see? Yeah. <laughs> I know? think uh, they probably saw maybe the breakthrough news mm. video, maybe the Al Jazeera, but I feel like breakthrough news was more, you know, uh, something that they may stumble across. Um, more than Al Jazeera? I don't know. I don't know what the kids look at these yeah. days. You don't know the. But well, I mean, you so can't isn't ask break, someone uh, their Isn't breakthrough the PSL outlet? Yeah. Or maybe. Damn. Actually, I maybe. Respect that. You know what? Yeah. That's, you know, respect. <laughs> I met, I met yeah. some breakthrough people before. They're nice. Yeah. But somehow, um, someone found out about it. Um, and I guess they shared it with each other. They're like, is this Mr. Yeah, Santiago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I guess everyone knew. And then whenever they pass by, they're like, some folks don't know. And then they're just like, hey, you okay? You're Kane? And I'm like, yeah, I was shot. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was we got to end Palestine. gun violence. Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, the monopoly of violence uh, Israel has on Palestinians, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I, I'd agree with that a little more. Yeah, um, yeah I, think, I, think, I think I actually want to end on um, a question because about kind of going back to why you went out there mm. um, and going back to the subject of, like, people seeing all this stuff and feeling, like, really animated about it and sometimes even, like, kind of going a little crazy from seeing it a little bit. Uh what recommendation would you have to people who like are feeling like they're useless, that there's nothing they can do, that they're just watching these atrocities happen all the time? Like, obviously they can't go to Gaza, but like, you know, we, we've covered on the show before, but like, also if you follow Palestine, like, you know, like the violence has escalated in the West Bank as it's escalated in Gaza. You know, the, the raids have grown more frequent now. Well, now they're moving up everyone towards Lebanon, but like, um, you know, there, this, this violence is occurring in a place where like, it's not just Gaza, where it's not just like a declared, well, whatever the fuck they're calling it, um, war, mill operation, whatever the fuck. Um, what would you say to people like who do watch this stuff and do feel like hopeless and, and helpless, and, like there's nothing they can do? Yeah, so, you know, teach their own capacity. Um, sharing always helps. It allows, um, you know, uh, visibility uh, because a lot of times folks are shadow banned and the algorithm does, um, mm -hmm. you know, put it down. Um, beyond that, uh, there is, you know, writing to the po your local politicians and trying to pressure them, even though we see that m most of the time it doesn't work. Um, that's another way. Beyond that, join a anti-imperialist organization near you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, those that actively try to... Um, you know, uh, dismantle these systems um, through um, an anti-imperialist lens. Um, um, you know, the same structure that upholds, you know, this U.S. system and um, this in Israel itself. Um, and, you know, building organization, getting people together and mobilizing for all these protests, which is another thing that you can go to, right, to raise the visibility um, fundraisers that happen sometimes after those, um, go to film screenings, um, organize film screenings for your friends. Like, th these are things that are doable, right? You can, um, organize a film screening of Israelism or Where the Olive Tree Weeps or Five Broken Cameras, right? You can do that with your friends. And then from there, the interest can grow. You know, if you're in a place where there's no real organization out there, and then do it up, right? Um, and uh, beyond that, too, uh, that the Palestinians are asking for, which if you are able to, right, mentally, physically, um, go to Palestine, right? See for yourself. 
um, through organizations like International Solidarity Mission or through FASA, which I was part of, um, because it's absolutely different being there, um, seeing the oppression that Palestinians face every day firsthand. Um, but on the flip side, seeing how beautiful Palestine is, seeing and feeling the love and care that you get from Palestinians there, um, it's just an experience. You know that I would not, you know, um, give up, and I think it's if you are able to, you know, and FAZA does try their best not to turn anyone one away uh, if they have difficulties financially. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, if you feel willing and able, um, going and volunteering is a great way to um, show solidarity, and you see it firsthand. It's so beautiful and it's so terrible at the same time. Um, but the Palestinian people just make it all worth it. Um, Palestine itself is so beautiful. And even though I was shot, I want to go back. So, um, whether it is next year, you know, you want to come with me, if they even let me go back in. Um, or, right, they are asking for people to come for harvest season. When's that? Which is like October 10th to November 10th. Um, and it doesn't need to be then either. But if folks are able and willing, you know, one of those two weeks, um, they do need a lot of volunteers to help with the olive harvest and um, obviously provide protective presence as well. So um, that would be amazing, you know, if, you know, listeners are able to. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, yes. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to link to a whole bunch of things in the notes, a lot of information for people to check out, including his op-ed, but links to some other organizations. And uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get the hell out of here. You can go home. Maybe I don't want to. Okay. Well, let's all just stay. We should all live, move in together. Have you guys thought about that? Yes. And you- You thought about it? Well, only as a joke. <laughs> you thought but you thought about it to yourself as a joke? Like, what if we all live together in well, a big I house? Well, I wasn't thinking that we would permanently live together. But I did. I, I was thinking if we were to go to a remote area and all stay in closed quarters for a specific amount of time, what that would be like and what would be required, like amenities-wise. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that... I think that you guys would soon understand a few things about me that very few people have understood in the past, which are my deplorable personal habits. And whatever you're thinking right now, you're wrong, and it's something that you could never even imagine. See, in my head, I'm picturing like a dollhouse, but we each have a floor, Mm. but then we all have to sleep in one bed, Willy Wonka style. We have to sleep in one, we get to sleep in one bed (laughs) with each other? Like head to toe. Yeah, head to toe. Head to toe? Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm never doing that ever. (laughs) Neapolitan. Because we are kind of Neapolitan. I'm the strawberry. Yeah. Well, I'm chocolate. Okay. Uh, Put that. No, it's it's true. Uh, I think that I think that we should all move in together into a obviously podcast I'm house. strawberry. Yeah, you're. Obvi- I'm not arguing with you being strawberry. I'm what are you saying, talking about? Yeah, I'm you're just strawberry. Saying, it's like very obvious. No, but like I mean, I think people. I think the the viewers will vote me as strawberry. Well, we don't have viewers. We have listeners. Yeah, you're always calling them viewers because they view me. <laughs> They remote view me. A lot of our <laughs> listeners can see me in their dreams. It's crazy dreams last night I had. I'll tell you guys about them afterwards. Wow. All right, everyone. All right. Um, I'm Liz. My name is Brace. We are joined by producer Young Chomsky. And this has been Drone On. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.